Hi, it's me, Rachel Lynn, and today's Financial Friday is comparing my old budget to my new budget. So if you don't already know, I have been doing a budget for about three years now, um, and I have really only been trying to get out of debt completely for about a year. I guess I could say about a year and a half because um, I got out of all of my credit card debt and then it took me a few months to remember that I had student loans and um, so now I have been working on my student loans for about a year. So when I started working on my student loans and I realized just how badly I was in debt, that is when I started changing some things with my budget. So I just kind of wanted to go over for you and show you what I used to do and compare it to what I do now and um, just kind of how time has like progressed and how things have changed. So first of all, the file that I actually saved it was not even called my budget. It was called credit cards because I was trying to pay off my credit cards and I was not getting very good traction uh, living on my own, but I, I tried for quite a while to try and pay off credit cards. So you can actually see here where I had several credit cards here. Dressborn canceled itself. I don't even know if Dressborn still exists, but um, I had that credit card and I had it for a long time and never used it and I, I think it canceled itself. These three were canceled sometime in the fall of 2017. I never did cancel these cards down here. Those are all cards that I still have open and active. I um, don't really use these two very often, but I'm going to go into more detail about how I use my credit cards um, next week. But right now, I'm just going to kind of tell you they're not canceled because I noticed that my credit score dropped a lot when I canceled these credit cards. and it kind of freaked me out a little bit and so um, I stopped doing that. So what I did is I kept my running total of how much I owed completely and then how much my next payment was. So if it was like a $15 payment, I had it in here and then when that payment due date was for each month. And then of course I had the available credit and these aren't even the same anymore because that's changed. My goodness, I didn't even change the available credit on here when I paid off my Lane Bryant card. This right here was added about this time last year when I started working on my student loans and figured out when things were due and how much it was going to be. So this part right here was not actually there um, for most of the time. It was really just this. And then as the cards got um, paid off or canceled or whatever it was, it got moved up to this part. Okay, now for the main meat of my budget, this is it right here. There's act actually nothing under me. Ta-da! Nothing there. This was just what I did. So I had a rent, my church, like what I was giving to church, what I what I paid to the loans account. This was something that did change. Um, my gas, oil, and repairs. That was all in one. Uh, groceries, gifts, and holidays. I just kind of like ran that up as a sinking fund and just kind of like kind of ran that total up but it stayed in my checking account all of the time. Um, dues, that was for paying my dues in order to work at Churchill Downs and Keeneland. Um, extra payments for my student loans, that was something new that I added before I changed my budget. Savings, I'm not sure if this was something that I added or if this was something I was doing. I really can't remember this part because that, I mean, this was a year ago. My teaching budget, my HP Instant Ink, Progressive, my car insurance, and then Verizon, that is my cell phone bill. This was obviously after it was changed and I lowered the bill down because the bill was originally like a $95 to $100 bill every month that I got lowered to about $53 and I did that simply by not upgrading my phone and um, canceling some things on my plan that I didn't even know I was paying for and didn't even use. So Netflix, um, I used to subscribe to CBS All Access. That was something that I canceled shortly after realizing what was going on with my student loans and then I had my spending money. So I have my general budget here and I think this is for a month and what I did is I split my paycheck up into two. So I got paid on the 30th and the 15th and then I actually have like a third paycheck right here which is um, like the next next so that I could get prepared for the next going into the next month. And what I used to do is put in how much I wanted to spend in each spot here. What I would actually do is take this and I would copy it 
and then paste it over here and you'll see things are changing over here. And then I would take this and I would copy it and I would paste it over here and then I would change this one, which usually matched what this one was too. Okay, I have no idea what I've done, but I tried to reset everything and it just messed everything up. So going on, um, this is, I don't even know what this column is. So if you've ever heard me talk about my old budget where I just moved everything over, that's what I did. Over here I have these formulas in here that would calculate how much I have in the bank, how much I'd be getting in my paycheck if I got, you know, Churchill or Keeneland, and then the total, and so I, like, I can't even tell you how this works anymore because it's been so long, it really has. So this is my current check, or my current bank account, I guess, my next paycheck, what I would get paid. So like, this is the current one. The next one is here, and then the two paychecks would be here, and then this might be the future. This is estimated extra money that I would be earning. So if I knew that I was going to get a check from Churchill, I would estimate how much that would be, I'd put it in here, and then I would pre-spend it on all of the different things over here. Once I got my check, I'd take it from here, and then I would put it in the actual, like, current or next paycheck, wherever it goes. So down here, you can see where I started working on my emergency fund and trying to build that up. And this was just before I changed up my budget. Okay, so next I'm going to show you what my budget looks like now. So it took me a few months to kind of get things the way that I wanted. There was a little bit of a transition in there, and I actually have a video about how I was going through that. Um, it was more like in the moment, like, oh, I've changed my budget. Here's what it looks like now. So it does look very different. And this is almost a year of readjusting things, moving things around, making the fonts look the way that I want them, making the colors look the way that I want them. So here we go. Okay. I have made this pretty small because there is a lot to this budget. Uh, and then I have put myself here where there is nothing underneath of me. So this is January 2019. I know it's very, very small. There's not really much that you need to see in detail. If you want to see more in detail, check out my monthly budget recaps, my mid-month budget updates, or my budget setups, and I will show it bigger and you'll be able to see better. But I just kind of wanted to see visually what this looks like and how it's different. So I have my general budget. That's kind of where I can get my information from. If I change things around for one month, then the next month I can look at that general budget and know, oh, I'm not really supposed to have $150 in gas because I raised that for traveling to Keeneland. So I really am supposed to only have $75. So I can lower that back down to the correct amount. I have what is is actually allotted for the month. I have what I actually spent and then I have what is remaining, what is left for me to spend. Then each allocation, this one is my known allocations. This is the only one that does not actually total up, but the rest of these, they all total up down here. And what I do is I enter in everything I spend. I'll enter it here. It'll total it up here. And then this right here, this is actually a formula that gathers this information right here. So I don't ever enter anything right here. I enter everything on this side. I have a place for notes so that I don't forget something. Um, or if there's something important that I want to remember to tell you, then I also put that in the notes. I have plenty of room for extra income and I can add and subtract all of the lines that I want to. I have an area down here to enter sinking funds that does not come from anything that's over here. When I use my sinking funds, I have to enter it twice. I do enter it here and then I also have to enter it here. That's the only one that's like that and that's because sinking funds are very different. You'll also notice that I have one, two, three, four, five, six different bank accounts and they all serve a very different purpose and I keep track of all of them right here. So what I'd like to do now is to go over the pros for both. If I went over the cons, I'd really be talking more about what I like about the other one. So I'm really just going to go over pros today. So what I liked about this budget is that I could concentrate on one paycheck at a time. This was really important for just establishing a budget, trying to figure out how much I owed on what day, when I got paid, how to pay for something that maybe cost more than I actually had for one paycheck, such as when my rent actually used to be uh, $700. So that was, that would be pretty much 
all almost all of one whole paycheck and so what was I going to do in order to you know split that up I also like that I was able to look three paychecks ahead not just one month at a time and I could actually keep going and keep looking to more paychecks in the future if I just kept adding rows and formulas. I felt like I was always constantly looking forward to the next paycheck. I will say that a con in that is almost like I'm like not quite living paycheck to paycheck, but it's just kind of like I can't wait till my next check. I can't wait till my next check. Um, my current budget is more like I can't wait till the next month to like restart, but it's not like the next check, the next check, the next check. I like the simplicity of this budget, how easy it is. It's just a simple list of everything here that I needed and it was very, very easy to move money around because, you know, I would just put like 50 here and 50 here instead if I needed to and that was how I would move my money around. For this budget, my first pro is that it's so much more fun to look at just because I like all the colors and of course I chose colors that I like and that I like looking at and so if you did something similar to this then this is definitely something you could do the colors that you like. This budget is based on Budget Girl's budget. It is not exactly from hers. I didn't just like copy and paste it. I tried and then I tried to make it the way that I wanted and I just it just didn't really like fit me quite right but this is very very close to what she has and I put in all the formulas myself just so that I would know where everything was and where it was coming from and um, it just kind of made made life for me a little bit easier having me do it myself just because like I really know this budget something else that I like about this budget is that I don't just move it over I'll open up a whole new spreadsheet I'll copy the whole thing plop it into here and then I'll just clear out all of the stuff that I've entered in here and then start fresh. So this is saved from month to month. To month. Every new sheet that I open, I rename it the current month that I'm in. So this one is actually named January 19 and it's saved. So I can go back and I can look at every single budget from last year. With moving everything over, I just kind of basically deleted the rows. I don't have everything saved. So what I really like is that I can go back and look and what came up in June that I am not thinking about this year. So I can open up last year's June budget, see if there was anything unexpected that came up. I think my Amazon Prime comes up somewhere around May or June. So it's like I can go back and look at that budget and know that that unexpected expense is coming and it's no longer unexpected. I also like that I can see everything I spent. I put in every single transaction that comes through. So I can see if I'm overspending somewhere like I did here, I can see where I went wrong and try to fix it going into the next month. I can also see trends for the year. It was pretty eye-opening to see just how much I really spent in things like my teaching allocation and so I am really trying to get that under control now that I have that information. I would love to know how you do your budget. Do you do it bi-weekly like I used to? Do you do it monthly like I do now? Do you do it weekly? Do you do it daily? I don't know. How is it that you do your budget and what works best for you? So leave me a comment down below and let me know what kind of budget you use. If you had to pick between my two budgets, which one would you rather go with? The simple one that goes from paycheck to paycheck or the more complex one that shows everything. So go ahead and like this video. Don't forget to subscribe if you are not already. Next week I will be posting my February budget setup video and then the week after that I will actually post my January recap so you can actually see my newer budget in action if you have not already been seeing that. So if you don't already know, I make videos about getting out of my student loan debt and losing some weight along the way. That's all I have for today. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.